In this box is the Sideshow or Hot Toys Dark Trooper. I actually don't know which it is because I can never remember which one is a Sideshow and which one is a Hot Toys. To me, they're all kind of the same, right? Also, 10% off your next Hot Toys purchase. Take it if you want it. I don't want it. I don't know how that even works. It's a QR code. I pre-ordered this all the way back at the beginning of 2021. It is now September 2022. It was supposed to come in like February of 2022, but they just kept delaying it time and time again. I actually don't even remember how much I paid for this. So is it worth the money? I, I don't know. I mean, it's still in the box. I still wouldn't know anyway. It was one of those purchases that I feel like I wouldn't buy this today. I feel like if this was available today and it just came out today, I wouldn't be buying it. But they put the pre-order up not too long after these guys showed up in The Mandalorian Season 2 and I was enamored with them. So like had to have it. But I guess that's where they make their money. Anyway, this is a Hot Toys, apparently. It said Hot Toys here, so it's a Hot Toys. That's nice. All right, I paid $260 for this. Oh my goodness, $260. I did get $13 in rewards points, so that's cool. Packaging-wise, this doesn't look discernibly different to me than any of the other versions of characters that I've had like this, and I assume I will open it the same way that most of the other ones would open like this. Oh yeah, at least it's got a nice picture on the inside. It's very lightweight, I must say, very lightweight. Um, so we're gonna pull this off and hopefully see our dark trooper. Please read instructions sheet and follow all construction details during the assembly process. All right, well, we'll see about that. I'll decide if I wanna do that later. So it's got a plastic front. Let me just pull the whole thing out, I guess. That'll make it easier. Looks like we got some magnets here. That is very shiny. That's your dark trooper right there. Looks like all of our, woo! Okay, maybe don't do that. All right, we're learning lessons on the go. All right, these are just extra hands actually. So it looks like we get a litany of extra hand movements and things that I don't necessarily need. Unless I guess maybe I want them to hold the weapon. Maybe you need some of the other hands. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. All right, where are the instructions then? I have been informed that it's on the bottom of this. So I now know where the instruction sheet is. That's cool. This is basically everything here. Not a lot, but you don't need a lot. I'm honestly surprised there's as much as there is as far as hands go. Oh, these are batteries. These are not magnets. So it takes three for the head for the light up eyes and then three, oh, that comes right off. I don't even think that's magnets in there. That That's just in there. And if you turn the guy upside down, which you really shouldn't anyway, well, maybe it won't fall out on its own. This may not be an actual screwdriver, but if it gets the job done, it gets the job done okay so in here we put three of our batteries and then there are three more batteries that go into the back here apparently you can lift the arms sideways but you can't go further than this ah so the armor move wow that's fantastic okay so they're just jointed like you get like a range of motion you can only be in between there so it's 90 degrees maximum and then the legs can move forward 30 degrees uh, so you can have like a walking motion like that up to 30 degrees so that's like your maximum forward motion and then your maximum backward motion should be 30 degrees plus that 90 degree bend it's a little ridiculous looking but that is the articulation on the knee joint there and then the front to back leg joint articulation. There's also some movement within the hips there on like a ball joint that seems to look very fancy in there. Uh, it looks like plastic to me. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not an expert on these figures, but definitely looks like plastic in there. Uh, and it's light enough to where it might just be, but it feels pretty robust. Like I'm not worried about it like breaking or snapping or anything there. So here at the front, it says Star Wars Dark Trooper very beautifully in this metallic color. And then here we have the thing that is basically gonna assist the Dark Trooper on standing on the stand you have to kind of snap it. You need, you need some force here you to kind of snap it into place there uh, within the grating, which actually looks pretty good. And it's kind of got a bluish hue to it. It's not completely just metallic. It's definitely got a tinge of blue there. That's what the bottom looks like. Just some copyright information. Um, but this should basically cradle the dark trooper in a place that, uh, no, how does this, that's not how I thought it was going to go. And you can't put it in the rear or forward grates because it's a little bit too long. You can see it's just not gonna fit in there at all. Like it won't fit there. So you can't put it there. I just can't believe they don't include a picture of the thing on its stand. It's the least intuitive thing to me is how to get these like uh, sideshow hot toy stands to work. I'm gonna break this. I'm literally gonna just break this. Okay, so now it's there. It definitely has to attach around the leg. How does this work? Why? 
I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. I don't know. Through some incredible internet research, I've discovered that it does indeed need to be centered and that this, by pinching it like a kitchen utensil, raises up. And so then it will uh, cradle the dark trooper. And so you can have it here. And then, like I said, you want to pinch this, bring this up into the crotch area and it loosely holds on to him so he doesn't fall over. <laughs> I don't trust it. I'm going to be honest. I don't trust it at all. Um, let me see if I can pose this thing in any reasonable way, but I don't, uh, that it, one, it looks weird, like just really, really weird. I'm not an expert with displaying these though. Man, this stay I hate these so much. Wow, it goes in the back. Would you look at that? Okay, so it's back, it's centered. Now, maybe it'll work the way it's supposed to. We're gonna screw with it a little bit more without the stand and come back to that. Okay, so there's a few things you need to know about this figure here. There's an on-off switch on the back here that we just put the batteries in, and when you turn that on, there are a few red indicator lights on the front that turn on that are really cool. And then there's the on off switch on the top of the head, which we currently obviously have the top part off. Uh, and if we turn that on, the lights on the eyes of the dark trooper show up. And these are no dimly lit eyes. These, you don't need to even turn these lights off to be able to see. It's kind of incredible how nice that looks. And we'll leave those on for the uh, remainder of this. I don't know if you want to call it a review, more of a traipsing through of the dark trooper, but there's the eyes with the uh, head actually put together. And I mean, I think that looks fantastic. It is really sharp. Of course, the red eyes are such an iconic part of the dark trooper. So like, why not? We have some posable toes. And with that, the like top part of the foot moves just a slight bit, which is really cool. Um, it looks like the ankle can move left and right as well. And then of course you can move this thing up and down quite a bit. So a lot of posability within the feet there. We already showed off the knee joint, but just again, uh, it looks like it can move, but the armor on here doesn't move like up to cover back up the exposed joint. So that's up and down. Looks like maybe some like bandolier things with canisters. I don't know, they're on the side of that leg, but the other side doesn't have it. So just interesting uh, stuff there. And then of course, again, with the hips, you have that ball joint and then you have just massive movement there. I mean, it's fantastic. And then if we get a good look in there, it's incredibly well detailed with this very nice metallic color, it looks very mechanical within. So even some uh, teeth there uh, right in his crotch. So I think that looks really, really cool. And uh, the amount of detail I think you would want on a $260 action figure right now it does have a waistband here with tons of different little accessories and pouches i don't really know what a droid is using pouches like that for but you know whatever that's star wars um this thing on the side can move just a little bit and then something interesting you can pull that thing out apparently i saw this in the instructions and well okay his, he twists his body but the body's supposed to just come apart i don't want to pull it apart and break it. But the instructions literally show, pull this out and then the whole body will come off the uh, the waist there. I don't know what I need to do to, to make this happen. Well, apparently the torso is supposed to come apart. Unfortunately, I cannot get it to come apart. So as far as I'm concerned, that's just not happening. Looks like the figure can move left and right about the uh, waist area too, which is kind of cool. So you can get some crazy movement out of this. Uh, the shoulders, of course, we showed where the shoulder pads kind of move up when you move up the joint. It's on a ball joint as well, or maybe it's not on a ball joint. It actually looks like it's two independent pieces. So one that goes around and then one that kind of moves up and down. And then you can even spin this about a different axis. So quite a few different ranges of motion. The arm pulls up, the hands move around, just everything you would, I think, expect from a figure like this. Like, I kind of like this hand pose here where he's kind of holding his hand out, like, give it to me, but like, what is he asking for? I don't know. So I forgot earlier to reattach the back panel, but you can't change the lights on the front without taking the panels off. So we'll leave them on, like I said, but we'll pop that back on for now. Now, back to the front here. We got, we got a real, what are you talking about look for this guy? You know, what, what, what gives, you know? Um, this is like when I died in Call of Duty, like what happened? Anyway, uh, we have the weapon here, very lightweight, just basically plastic, like nothing crazy here, but it's a nice mold, I guess. I assume it's accurate to the weapon they use in the Mandalorian, but honestly, I don't know and didn't look. So he has a hand for his right hand here that has his one finger extended to uh, attach to the trigger essentially, and that lines up pretty perfectly there. These hands are slightly rubberized, so you don't have to worry about them like snapping or anything when you go to put them into place. But if we take his hand off the ball joint there. We can place this other hand with the 
weapon in. And then I assume we're supposed to take this hand out and attach the other hand here as the other hand that's gonna like hold the weapon. So just like that, he's holding the weapon and can put it to use and all that. So like, it's it's pretty cool. Like, I think it looks pretty good with the weapon, although they do provide an alternate way to store your weapon. So this is supposed to be on here. It's basically like the magazine. So that was supposed to be on there. And then if you want, you're supposed to take this off and then place this on the side of uh, the dark trooper here, but it seems, yeah, it's just a slight magnet in there. I can't, I couldn't even tell there's a magnet in here. It's not heavy enough for me to tell. It's probably just a small strip there, but it does magnetize to the side of the dark trooper, which is nice, I guess, but it also seems like something that could like fall off at the slightest touch. But then again, um, for the most part, when you display a $260 figure, it's probably in a case. So it's probably not something most people are going to worry about. He looks like an old woman holding a purse. Like if you could have him hold a purse here, that's what it would look like. The third set of hands is a pair of punching hands, which if you're more skilled at getting figures to uh, look like they're supposed to as far as their movements, you might have a better look for this one, but like there, it's nice that it's there. Obviously from the show where he tries to punch in the door, like it's nice that that is represented. I just, I have no idea where to even begin to try and represent that with the actual articulation of the character. Mine just looks like he's holding on to a uh, bicycle handlebars or something. It's, it's just not a good look for me. I, I can never make these things look good. I need help. So these are probably my least favorite hands just from the perspective of that I can't make the hands fit the figure. Rather, I can't make the figure fit the hands. Like I can't make him look like he's doing a punch, you know? Like that's, that's trouble for me. Now the Dark Trooper's on the stand and it seems reasonably sturdy as long as it's got that thing in between it. I still, I mean, I wouldn't trust it too much. I wouldn't be picking it up on the stand or anything like that, but it's nice that it's got some balance to it. So you can at least put the figure on a display and not worry about it maybe toppling over in the middle of the night. I think that's like pretty well covered by having this thing in between his legs. And so that's nice. Now. I love keeping the lights on, but it is a bit of an annoyance to have to pull both the things off to turn them off and on. So, you know, I wish one day there could be like a little remote or something. I don't know, maybe I'm thinking a little bit too far ahead, but it would be an ease of life thing. If I had this figure right here in front of me right now and I didn't own it, but I was like getting to test it out essentially, I wouldn't spend $260 on it. Now I'm not the biggest fan of hot toys or sideshow collectibles or like six scale action figures, but I am a big fan of Star Wars and collectible things. And like, I just don't see the value for 260 bucks for me in this particular character. It was a spur of the moment purchase for $260 right when it was coming out. I was like, oh man, I don't wanna miss out on this one. And I didn't miss out on it, clearly here it is. But I also don't feel like I, I don't know, I just don't feel satisfied for 260 bucks. And it's not like it's it's not like the character doesn't do enough stuff. It has lights, it has very nice posability. It's got three very cool different sets of hands that you can change out. Like there's a lot of good stuff about this. I just, I, if I could go back and do it again, I wouldn't is my point. So hopefully in some way that helps you make a purchasing decision if you were like on the edge, I would recommend not and maybe put your money towards something else. I don't know what else you want, but this to me just doesn't do it. I probably won't end up keeping this one as cool as it looks. I just would rather have $260 in my pocket. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you can check out more Star Wars collector videos on the end screen now.